Okay, are we ready to dive in? So once again, the cells that are highlighted in blue are the ones that you need to put in the formula. This is the spreadsheet that contains this is the template for table 6.4 and table 6.5. In table 6.4, we'll use the perpetual infantry system. So the perpetual infantry system is a system that keeps track of how many units do we have in, um, on hand. And then there are different, if you scroll down, there are different sections to table 6.4. In the first segment, we're going to use the perpetual infantry system with a first in, first out, so five-fold valuation. So the an infantry system has two components, how you keep track of the quantity and how you keep track of the value. First, let's take a look at the information that you're given. You're given the beginning balance. So the beginning balance occur on January 1st of both quantity on hand and the value of the, of the infantry. In addition to that, you were given um, information on sales. So this is the quantity sold as well as the quantity that is purchased. Let's create this spreadsheet in two steps. First, I'm going to go over um, how to compute the quantity um, on hand in um, in each transaction. And this is a relatively straightforward process. So the quantity on hand is equal to the beginning balance, so what you have on hand previously, plus what you purchased that particular uh, that period, so plus quantity purchase. Even though we don't have any purchase on the second, we still create a formula that include that, so that the formula will be applicable um, every single uh, day, uh, minus the quantity sold. So this is a relatively common finance accounting formula. So ending balance or the new balance is the old balance plus purchases minus quantity sold. So that's our quantity on hand and we can copy this. So again, we can use um, the shortcut. So it will be um, control C and then we can use our arrow key to go down to the next row, hold down the shift key and highlight all the cells that we want to copy to and use control V. And now you have completed all the formulas necessary to do quantity on hand. Next, I'm gonna finish the purchases column, which is very straightforward. The cost of purchase is simply unit cost times quantity purchase. So that's our uh, cost of purchase. So we can copy that to the next um, purchase and also um, the following purchase. So now we have completed the total cost of purchase. The next we're going to look into cost of goods sold. And this is the part that is different between different valuation system. So the process that I just did computing the quantity on hand uh, will be the same regardless of the valuation method because this is the perpetual infantry system. We are keeping track of exactly how many units we have on hand at every single given point in time. However, to uh, how much the infantry is value at any given point in time varies depending on the valuation method that you use. So we are using the first in first out method and we're going to see how that how we need to apply that when we determine the cost of goods sold. So let's take a look at the beginning balance. We have 100 units on hand and it is worth $500. That means it's worth $5 per unit. So you take $500 divided by 100, that's $5. So the first sales is 60 units. So first in, first out, which means we're going to use the oldest infantry first. So the oldest infantry, the cost is $5. Next, we sold 30 units. So remember, we started with 100, we sold 60 units, we still have 40 units at $5. So the next 30 units is still value at $5. The next unit sold is 10 units. So remember, we have 100 units at $5. So the 6 plus 30 plus 10, that's with still the 100 units we have. So that is also cost $5. Now we have used up 100 units. So the beginning balance is all gone. The next 30 units that we sell will come out of the next purchase. And that the cost for that is 
and 50 cents. Notice that uh, these two sales, 10 units and 30 units, both occur on January 6th. So this could be one order. A customer may come in and purchase 40 units from you. But because the, two, the 40 units comes from different sets of inventory, they have different costs and you have to separate them. So someone may purchase 40 units, but 10 of those units come from older inventory is value at $5. 30 units comes from the next batch of purchases, which is cost to, which, which is value at $5.50. So that's how you determine the unit cost under a FIFO valuation system. Computing the total cost of goods sold is relatively straightforward. Uh, we just take the unit cost times the quantity unit sold, and then we can copy this to, um, the other uh, sales that we have made. So now we have uh, determined both the quantity and we also then can determine the value. Uh, to, commute, to compute the inventory value is, is again similar. We take the um, old balance, so that's $500, plus the value of the purchase. So make sure you pick up the co correct column. And then minus the value of the cost of goods sold. So it's very similar, old balance plus purchases minus cost of goods sold. So the same, again, we can copy that down. So now we have uh, both quantity and uh, value. Finally, we can compute the total column, and this is a little bit tricky. So for purchases, we can just, this part is uh, relatively straightforward, which is uh, sum up all the quantity that we have purchased um, as well as um, the value so we can do both and we do the same thing again we can copy this over to uh, cost of goods sold so we have quantity purchase and cost of goods sold for balance, for the ending balance, we don't add it up because that would not make sense. The ending balance for the week is simply the most recent balance. So you have 120 units on hand and the value is $698. So we just reference those cells. Now notice that during this week, we have made several purchases. So the 120 units that we have on hand uh, have different value. So it is important to keep track of how much of each unit uh, is value at. So remember we purchased 50 units on January 3rd and we sold 30 of those 50 units. So that means we have 20 of those left that we purchased at $5.50. And then on January 5th, we purchased 50 units and those are value at $5.75. And then on January 7th, we bought another 50 units, and those are value at $6. Okay. And so if you add this up, you'll come up with 120 units. So you can double check that. And you can also double check that if you multiply this out and you add it up, you should have the same value, so $697.50. So again, if you um, you expand the number of decimal places, um, you will see that that's exactly what you get. So after you do your work here, you do want to um, double check your work. So this is um, a, a good accounting um process. Um, and it's important to keep track of the composition of your ending inventory because the next time period, you also need to, when you start selling products, you need to make sure that you are assigning the correct cost to the, to the product that you're selling. Next, we're going to look at the same system, but this time we're going to use the last in first out valuation. Now notice that we are, um, since we are using the same system is, is the perpetual inventory system, the way that you compute quantity on hand will be the same. And the way that you compute purchases will also be the same. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video and go ahead and put in the formulas to compute quantity on hand and 
the cost of purchase. Great, did you get the same answer? Uh, again, the formula should be very similar and it's exactly the same as the last, um, the first table. What is different is determining the unit cost uh, in this system. So here we are using LIFO, Elastin First Out Valuation, which means that we are going to sell the newest inventory first. So on January 2nd, um, you only, the, only, the only inventory you have on hand is the beginning balance. So again, that is 100 units at $500, so that is worth $5 per unit. Now, on January 4th, you sold 30 units, but you're going to sell the newest product first. So the newest product is the 50 unit that you just purchased at $5.50. So you're going to sell 30 units out of the 50 units. And then on January 6th, you sold 40 units, but you purchased 50 units on January 5th. So again, you're going to sell the newest product first and the newest product this time costs $5.75. The rest of the calculation here is similar to what we have done before. Uh, so the cost of goods sold is equal to unit cost times quantity so sold. And then the ending inventory value again is the same as what we've done before is equal to the old balance plus the cost of purchase minus the cost of goods. So remember you want to include the cost of purchase even though uh, there's no purchases on, the, on January 2nd uh, because you want this formula to apply to every single row. And then we can copy this to all the other days. So here is our um, inventory value. Um, you can do the title, uh, the total the same as before. So again, I'm going to ask you to pause it and do it on your own. Did you remember not to add up the total for the balance column? So you notice that in um, you, when, if you use the last in, uh, LIFO method versus the FIFO method, your cost of goods sold is very different. Using the LIFO pro, uh, uh, method, the cost of goods sold is $695. But using the FIFO method, the cost of goods sold is $665. The last part is to determine the composition of your ending inventory, meaning of the 120 units you have on hand, how many units is value at what price? So we have to go through um, the process again. So we started with, we have some product on hand that, are, that, that have a cost of $5. We sold 40 units out of that. So that means we have 40 units left and those are value at $5. Um, next, we purchased 50 units. Out of the 50 units, we sold 30. So we'll have 20 units of that left. And those 20 units is value at $5.50. We purchased 50 units and we sold 40 units out of that. So we have 10 units of the, that batch of infantry left and that is has a cost of 575 cents. And lastly, we purchased 50 units at the, on the 7th and we did not sell any of those. So that is worth $6. Again, similar to what we've done before, you can check whether or not that is correct. So what you multiply the unit cost by the quantity, and if you add it up, it should equal to your ending inventory value that you have computed. So again, if you expand the, form, uh, the decimal places, the two matches, so you know you did this calculation correctly. So far, we have done the FIFO, first in, first out, and LIFO, last in, first out. Uh, the next item is called the average cost method. With the average cost method, we don't keep track of the uh, individual purchases and, and sales, but rather we compute an average cost. But before, before we do that, we still have to compute quantity on hand. Uh, again, that is the same. We're still using the perpetual inventory system. So I'm going to ask you to pause it and compute the quantity on hand and the total cost for purchases. And we'll check and check back in. 
So unlike the other method, we have to compute an additional item, which is called the average cost. The average cost is equal to the total value divided by the quantity on hand. So the first entry is the same. So $500 divided by 100 units, your average cost is $5. And the unit cost that you use is the average cost from the most recent period. So this is January 2nd, so the average cost will be the cost in on January 1st. And the total value of cost of goods sold is the number of units, unit cost times the quantity sold. And now we can complete the formula for the total inventory value. So again, inventory value is equal to the old balance, in this case, the $500, plus the value of purchase. So even though we didn't do any purchases, again, we include that in our formula, minus the cost of goods sold. And we also need to bring down or uh, bring in average cost. So we can copy the formula down to the next row. So, so far we have no purchases, so the, the sales um, did not affect the cost. But the next row, we have a purchase. So all we have to do is just copy these two formula down and see what happened. So if you copy this down, you'll notice that our, value, uh, we, our average cost went up because instead of uh, all the infantry costing $5, we now have new infantry that costs $5.50. So when you sell the make the next sales, the sales on January 4th, you're going to use the, um, again, you can copy this formula down. You're going to use the cost from the last period. So again, if you increase the number of decimal places, um, that will be more obvious. So it's $528, or uh, $5.28. And for the quantity of unit sold, we can again copy the formula down. Um, and all of this will, you, all you need to do is, is, is just copy the formula um, over and they will all work. Um, so again, sales does not affect the cost, but when you make purchases, so let's copy down to the next row. When you make purchases and if the cost of the purchase is different, it will increase the cost of the, of the product. So again, that uh, we just copy the formula down to all the other um, entries that we have. So you'll notice that the average cost keeps changing depending on your purchases. So now let's finish uh, by adding in the um, the total. So I'm gonna ask you to uh, I'm gonna ask you to pause it, and fill in the total, and then we'll check it back in. Did you get the same total? Great. In terms of the um, ending infantry composition, the average cost is the easiest because we don't keep we we um, we use the average cost. So as soon as the purchases is made, the value gets commingled. So the quantity you have 120 units, and the average cost is simply five hundred and five dollars and seventy cents. So when you multiply these together, of course, you'll get the same. Uh, ending inventory value. So you can double check that. Okay. So just to sum up, uh, when you use different valuation methods, so the in this particular case, notice that prices are going up. So in times of inflation, when prices are going up, FIFO, first in, first out, will give you the lowest cost of goods sold. Uh, last in, first out will give you the highest cost of goods sold. And not surprisingly, the average cost will give you the medium, the, the, the uh, something in between. Okay. Uh, we're going to move on to um, the next table, which is table 6.5, where we'll use a different uh, um, infantry system. We, instead of the perpetual infantry system, we're going to use a different system um, to keep track of the quantity of infantry. So in table 6.5, you're going to use the periodic infantry system. Uh, the main difference between the periodic infantry system and the perpetual infantry system is that you do not keep track of sales. Um, but rather, you go in and count your infantry on a regular basis. So you can think of different types of business uh, having the need for different types of system. Let's say you have a very high value per item business, let's say you're a jewelry store. Uh, you don't make a whole lot of sales, but each sale is worth a lot of money. 
then you definitely would want to use a perpetual inventory system to keep track of every single sales. On the other hand, if you are running a convenience store and you make tons of sales um, and everything from gums and candies, uh, you don't really want to be keeping track of uh, those uh, every single uh, item sales. Uh, and, and in that case, a periodic inventory system will be more appropriate. So in either case, you definitely want to keep track of um, your purchases. Again, uh, regardless of how you keep track of your uh, quantity of infantry you have on hand, um, the valuation, you can use different valuation methods. So in this first table, we're going to look at a periodic infantry system with a FIFO, first out, first, first in, first out valuation. The first calculation we're going to make is to figure out our uh, cost of purchase. So we keep track of the quantity purchase, the same as uh, notice that this is the same quantity as before, and also the cost for each um, batch of products that we bought. So the co total cost is the unit cost times the quantity purchase. So we'll copy this over. The total is just the sum of um, all your purchases. So and here are the sum of all your, uh, this is the quantity purchase and this is the value purchase. So in a periodic inventory system, you count how much you have on hand. So you counted uh, in the beginning, you have 100 units on hand. And then you also count at the end of the week, how much you have left. So you did the count and you figure out you have 120 units left. So you don't keep track of uh, sales, but you keep track of how much you have left on hand on a regular basis. Since you do not keep track of individual sales, you uh, you don't really know the value of the inventory. You start uh, you you compute that um, going backwards. So we know we have 120 units on hand at the end, and we know the amount that we purchased during the during the period. And this is first in first out. So that means we sold the oldest unit first. So we're going to go backward and we keep the newest unit on hand. Does that, that make any sense? So since we know we have 120 units, so that means that uh, we're going to go backward in time. Notice that. So we bought 50 units on January 7th. So we put 50 in here. That is more that that is not enough for the 120 units. So and then on January 5th, we bought another 50 unit. So now we're up to 100 units. We have 120 unit on hand. That means on January 3rd, we bought 50 units. That means 20 units uh, that we have left on hand will come from the infantry that we purchased on the 3rd. So again, we have the, you counted how many you have left on hand. You counted, you have 120 units on hand. You go backward based on your purchases to find out how many unit, how many uh, out of the 120 comes from each purchase. And then you take the corresponding uh, value from each purchase. So the January 7th is $6. Uh, January 5th is $5.75. And um, the, uh, January 3rd purchase is $5.50. Now you can extend this, multiply this uh, unit cost by quantity, and then add up the total. Uh, I'm going to show you a new method to do that. Uh, this is uh, in case you don't need to do the extension, uh, you can uh, simplify your formula. So the uh, function that I'm going to introduce is called some product. It's something that is a is a function that is very comment in finance. So some product means that you are multiplying the first row of column by the second column. So the first column is a quantity. The second column is the unit cost. So you're going to product means multiply. So you multiply each um, row and then you sum, you're going to add it to, up together. And if the quantity total, you can double check. That is 120. That's always good to check. So if you have not used this formula before, it's a good idea to double check that 
you, you have used it, you have applied it correctly. So what this, what this formula does is usually we'll take the unit cost times quantity and then we'll add up the total. So the sum product gives you exactly the same answer. And again, this is a formula that is very common in accounting and finance. So now that we have our ending infantry valuation, we can add our ending infantry value back in our table. Next, we're going to compute our cost of goods sold. We will do both quantity and value. So quantity, the first is the beginning balance on the first. So that's 100 units at purchases. So our purchases is 150 units. Again, we have computed that. So, and then the total goods available for sales is the sum of your beginning balance and your purchases. So you started with 100 units, you bought 150 units, so you have 250 units altogether. And then we subtract our ending infantry. Ending infantry is from January 7th. And the cost of goods sold is equal to total goods available for sale minus ending infantry. So this is the quantity. So we sold 130 units. And the value, again, we, we take that from the table. So our beginning value, January 1st, is $500. Purchases is a total of $863. So our goods available for sale in dollar amount is the sum of these two. And Ending inventory is $697.50. So cost of goods sold is goods available for sale minus ending inventory. So cost of goods sold is $665. This is how you would compute cost of goods sold and ending inventory value using the periodic inventory system with FIFO first in first valuation. We're going to scroll down to the next table where we're going to uh, compute uh, using the same infantry system but with last in first out. So remember, most of this is the same except when we look at um, the ending infantry calculation. So again, I'm going to ask you to pause this and compute the first segment, which is identical to um, the last table to compute the total cost of purchase. And then when you come back, we're going to look at ending infantry together. Okay, did you get the same answer? Of course, it, it's not surprising. Those purchases is the same. We, we bought the same amount of goods. We paid the same uh, uh, same price. Uh, so what we want to do is look at the ending infantry calculation. So once again, um, you did your infantry only on a weekly basis. So uh, the last week you have 100 units on hand and this week you have 120 units on hand. Because this is last in first out, so LIFO, when we do our ending infantry valuation, we start with the oldest to the newest, so the opposite of FIFO. So on January 1st, how much do you have on hand? January 1st, you have 100 units on hand. So if you're doing last in first out, that means you did not touch that 100 units at all. You have, 100, you, you have 120 units on hand, so the 100 units that you started with will still be sitting there. In fact, you have 20 more units. So our, the, our of all the purchases, um, the January 3rd purchase, you have 20 units of that left. So the unit cost for the first 100 units is the same is $5 because that's your beginning inventory. The purchase that you made on January 3rd is $5.50 per unit. So again, we can, uh, if we add this up, they will uh, equal to your ending inventory and the value again we're going to use the sum product function that we have used before so sum product uh, quantity and unit cost so this is our um, ending inventory value and now we can put that into our ending inventory value And we'll once again compute the cost of goods sold. It's the same process. Again, the formula is identical to um, the uh, 
LIFO. So I'm going to ask you to pause and again, try to uh, try to fill in this formula on your own and come back to check and see if you get the right answer. Did you get the quantity correct? If not, pause and take a look. Um, or you can watch together. We're going to do the value, which is similar to quantity. So again, this is beginning inventory. So we start the equal sign. This is beginning inventory. Purchases. Purchases is up here. And the total is beginning plus your purchases. And ending inventory. Ending inventory is here. And cost of goods sold is total goods available for sale minus ending inventory. Now, not surprisingly, we see that the cost of goods sold again is lower with FIFO when prices are rising than LIFO. Lastly, we're going to go over how to compute the periodic inventory system along with an average cost method. If you have not completed the purchase section, please pause the video now and go ahead and compute that. The, to, comp to, use the, uh, to use the average cost method, we actually have to go through the, uh, to get the total goods available for sale computed first. So in this case, we actually want to extend this. So our beginning inventory quantity, beginning inventory is $100. Um, and the value is $500. Purchases is $150. And the value of purchases is $863. So, so far, this is the same. And the total goods available for sale is the sum of beginning inventory and purchases. Uh, the same thing for quantity uh, is beginning inventory plus purchases. So we have 250 units available for sale at $1,363. So now we can compute the unit cost for um, co uh, goods available for sale. So that's equal to the value divided by the goods available for sale and uh, 250 units. And this, and that turns out to be a unit cost of $5.45. And this is the average cost that we're going to use to value our inventory. So our ending inventory is 120 units value at $5.45. So we take 120 units times $5.45. So that is our ending inventory. And so our ending inventory $120. Um, value at $564. So the cost of goods sold is goods available for sale minus inventory. The same for quantity. And our, so we have, we sold 130 units at a cost of $709 altogether. So again, the cost of goods sold using the average cost is between the LIFO method and the FIFO method. This concludes the demonstration of the spreadsheet calculation. See you again soon.